In the last lesson, we were introduced to the idea of groups and representations. We learned that in order for a set of elements to be a group, it must satisfy four requirements. It must contain the identity, it must satisfy closure, it must contain inverse elements, and the operation for combining elements must be associative. We looked at a lot of examples of things that were groups and things that were not groups. In this lesson, let's look at some applications of groups to real physical situations. Often in physics, we concern ourselves with transformations or rotations of different coordinate systems. Physicists like to take something that we know, such as a velocity or an acceleration, for example, stick that thing in a coordinate system, transform the coordinate system, and see what happened to the original item. A rotation group allows us to describe these coordinate system transformations. Let's start by looking at a rotation in two dimensions. Any element of a two-dimensional rotation group can be written as R of theta and describes the clockwise rotation of some coordinate system. Generally, the rule for combining these transformations is to just add the angles. In other words, the combination of a rotation by some angle theta with a rotation by some angle alpha gives us a net rotation by the angle of theta plus alpha. Before we do anything with this group, let's take what we learned from the last lesson and verify that the set of rotations in a plane does form a group. The first thing we check, as always, is the identity. Here I'll claim that the identity is the rotation by an angle of zero, or in other words, not rotating the system at all. We see that the composition of a rotation by an angle theta and a rotation by an angle zero, using our rule for adding the angles, yields a net rotation by an angle of theta plus zero, or just a rotation by theta. This is the original element, so the identity is looking pretty good. Next, we check closure. In this case, the things we're adding are all just angles, and we know that the addition of theta plus alpha gives us some other allowable angle that will still be in the group. So closure seems to be pretty good too. To check the inverse, remember that we want some element combined with its inverse element to give us back the identity, which we said earlier was a rotation by zero. I'll claim that the inverse element for a rotation by theta is just a rotation by negative theta. This way, the composition of the two rotations yields a net rotation by an angle of theta minus theta, which is of course just a rotation by zero. This is the identity, so inverse holds too. Finally, associativity deals with the rule for combining angles, which in this case is just addition. We know that addition is associative, so that property holds as well. So it turns out that the set of rotations in a plane does form a group because all four requirements hold. So we can go ahead and proceed with this example. Let's look at a two-dimensional representation of a rotation group. In this representation, each element can be written as the following 2 by 2 matrix, where theta is the angle by which we're rotating our coordinate system. For this particular representation, we'll combine multiple elements via matrix multiplication. Following the example from before, I'll again combine a rotation by an angle of theta with a rotation by an angle of alpha. And this time, I'll multiply these two matrices one matrix using the angle theta, and one matrix using the angle alpha. The rule from before tells us we should get a matrix that represents a rotation by the net angle theta plus alpha. Take a minute to pause the video and perform the matrix multiplication for yourself. I want you to prove that what I've stated here is in fact true. To do so, you may need the following trig identities. Now, let's take this rotation group and actually rotate something. For this example, I'm going to take a vector in two dimensions that originally points in the positive x direction with a length of 1. Next, I'm going to rotate this coordinate system clockwise by an angle theta. We see this example quite often in physics. There are several examples where we'll have things, again, such as a velocity or an acceleration, that we know shouldn't change depending on how we set our coordinate system. 
However, rotating the coordinate system does cause the components of the vector to change, even if the magnitude doesn't. Keep in mind that it's very important to distinguish whether we're rotating the vector or rotating the coordinate system. In this case, all rotations act on the coordinate system, and the vector remains unchanged. Let's see what happens when we multiply this rotation matrix by the vector 1, 0. Our resulting vector has components cosine theta in the x-direction and sine theta in the y-direction. Notice that the magnitude of the vector is still 1. The vector itself remains invariant, but its components have changed. Let's draw a picture of what happens when we rotate the coordinates and see if the results check out. Notice that in this picture, the vector has not changed at all. It still points directly to the right, and the coordinate system has rotated. When we break this vector into x and y components, it turns out that the vector we found above perfectly describes the vector in the new transformed coordinate system. That 2D example was nice and fun, but realistically, most of the things we deal with in physics happen in three dimensions. So now let's look at some rotations in 3D. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that all the rotations we're dealing with happened in the same plane. In two dimensions, we didn't really have to worry about this, but in 3D, it will become very important. In fact, in three dimensions, there are three different planes about which we can rotate. The XY plane, the YZ plane, and the ZX plane. The order of the subscripts in our rotations is very important. If I write RXY, this represents a rotation in the direction from the X-axis towards the Y-axis. If I were to write RYX, this would represent a rotation in the opposite direction, from Y towards X. The rule for combining these rotations still works just fine as long as we remain in the same plane. For example, a rotation in the XY plane by an angle of theta combined with a rotation in the XY plane by an angle alpha still yields a rotation in the XY plane by the net angle theta plus alpha. Nothing has really changed since we did this in two dimensions. Things get a little more complicated, however, when we start combining, say, a rotation in the XY plane with a rotation in the YZ plane. It's true that this yields a net rotation in some plane by some angle, but it's not always easy to figure out which plane we've rotated about, or by what angle we've rotated. More often than not, the plane of the net rotation isn't one of the standard x, y, y, z, or z, x planes, but rather some other plane in between. To avoid this mess, we'll use another 3D representation that uses 3x3 three three matrices instead. Rotations in these three different planes can be represented as follows. With these representations in mind, Let's jump right into a 3D example. I'll rewrite the rotation matrix for a rotation in the ZX plane here. And for this example, I'll use a vector that originally points in the positive X direction. This can be represented by the vector with components 1, 0, 0. Now, I'm going to use this rotation matrix to rotate my coordinate system about the ZX plane by 90 degrees. I know that my resultant coordinate system, just by drawing a picture, not even doing any math yet, should look like this. Assuming that the vector doesn't move, we should get a resulting vector that points in the positive z direction. Now let's apply matrix multiplication between the rotation matrix and the vector and see if the results are consistent. All right, it looks like the math checks out and the rotations in the picture are consistent. So it looks like performing a single rotation on a coordinate system is pretty straightforward. But what if I want to perform multiple rotations in a row? 
Turns out this operation is actually also pretty straightforward. Let's say, for example, that I want to rotate something first in the xy plane and then in the yz plane. The net operation can be found by multiplying the rotation matrix in the yz plane first by the rotation matrix in the xy plane second. We list the matrices in reverse order so that if these matrices were acting on a vector, the rotation that we do first acts on the vector first, and the rotation that we do second acts on that resultant vector second, and so on and so forth for an indefinite number of rotations. What I want you to do now is tell me how a rotation first in the xy plane by 90 degrees and second in the yz plane by 90 degrees acts on the following three vectors. First, a vector pointing entirely in x, second, a vector pointing entirely in y, and third, a vector pointing entirely in z. For each of these three vectors, I want you to find the result two ways. First, by drawing a picture, and second, by performing matrix multiplication. Finally, look at that net rotation matrix. Can this net rotation be reduced to a single rotation in a single plane? All right, let's quickly go through these solutions. I'll start with the vector pointing in the x direction. Our original vector and coordinate system should look like this. Now I'm going to rotate the coordinate system in the xy plane by 90 degrees. Remember that the order of the subscripts tell us we're rotating from x towards y. So the resulting coordinate system looks like this, with the vector now pointing in the negative y direction. Now I'll rotate the coordinates again by 90 degrees in the yz plane. Again, I'm rotating in the direction from y towards z. This result coordinate system looks like this, and the vector, which still hasn't changed, now points in the positive z direction. So it looks like we want the vector in the new coordinate system to have components 0, 0, 1. Now let's see if this is consistent with the matrix multiplication. Remember, we multiply our matrices in reverse order. So I'll write RYZ plugging in 90 for theta first, and RXY with 90 for theta second. Both matrices act on the original vector, 1, 0, 0. Now I'm going to plug in some numbers for those trig functions. Multiply the two matrices together to get a net rotation. Multiply that net rotation matrix by the original vector. And we pop out the following resultant vector with components 0, 0, 1. That's exactly what we said it should be based on the pictures. So we're doing pretty well so far. We can apply very similar methods to get answers for parts B and C. For part B, with the vector originally in the y direction, you should have found the resultant vector to be 1, 0, 0, or point in the positive x direction. And for part C, with the vector originally pointing in positive z, you should have found a resultant vector with components 0, 1, 0, or pointing in the positive y direction. Finally, let's look at that last question. Can these two rotations be reduced to a single rotation in a single plane? Well, we said earlier in the video that any combination of rotations can be reduced to a single rotation in a single plane. So that should still be true here. Let's look at this pictorially. The original coordinate system is as so and we want to change it to this final coordinate system using one single rotation. With a little bit of thought, we see that this is indeed possible. Imagine a plane like this, where the vertex of the coordinate system is the only point in contact with the plane. If this confuses you a little bit, imagine a cube balanced on a flat surface on just one of its corners. Then we'll take the coordinate system or the cube, if that helps, and spin it about its corner by 120 degrees. This seems to work out with the picture we've drawn. Unfortunately, finding a way to express that plane gets pretty difficult, which is why we use matrices in the first place. 
So the answer to this question is yes. We can reduce these two rotations to a single rotation in a single plane, but figuring out exactly what that plane is gets pretty complicated.